after Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, the Holy Spirit filled the disciples, and they went out and told everyone about Jesus. Thousands upon thousands believed in Jesus as their Savior. It was an exciting time. But there was a group that was against it. They were a group of Jewish leaders called Pharisees. Now, one of these Pharisees was a young man named Saul. Saul, ever since he was a little boy, grew up learning about the Jewish law. He knew it. He obeyed it. Even the laws that the Pharisees made up. Saul also believed that everyone should obey those laws. So when he heard that people were believing in Jesus as their Savior and following him, ooh, did he get angry, real angry. He made it his mission to persecute Christians, hurt them. To persecute means to hurt or to make fun of someone for what they believe in. And that's what Saul did. He persecuted Christians. He would go from house to house and arrest the Christians, put chains on them and throw them into prison. Ouch! Awful! Well, the Christians, they were afraid, probably. Wouldn't you be? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of them started to escape Jerusalem and go to other cities. That's actually how Jesus' name was spread, going to other cities. And so when Saul found out that Christians were going to a city called Damascus, he was angry. He wanted to go there and bring them back and throw them in prison, sentence them to death as well. Ouch. But in order for him to go to Damascus, because it was another city, he had to get permission, permission from the Jewish leaders, from the high priest. So once he got his papers from the high priest, he got his men together and they set out on a journey to the city of Damascus. Damascus was 175 miles away. It would take him five days to get there, but he didn't care. He was determined to get those Christians. So he got up on his horse, let's say, and started to Damascus. Boys and girls, have you ever rode a horse before? Why don't you stand up and pretend to gallop? Can you gallop? Da -da 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 -da. Let's do it together. Ready? And... Now they weren't far from Damascus when a bright, dazzling light shone down. And Saul, he was, well, he fell to the ground. Ooh. Oops. He heard a voice. <gasps> A voice that said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul looked up. Who is that? Lord? And Jesus answered, it is I, Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Ho, ho. Jesus was alive and talking to Saul. Saul realized that the Christians were right. He did die and come back to life again. God wanted Saul to know that it was true. He was alive. He also wanted Saul to realize that when you hurt Christians, when you persecute Christians, you're persecuting God. You're hurting God. Wow. Saul believed. Can you believe it? One, two, three, bang. Saul believed. Now, Jesus gave him directions. He said, go into the city and stay at a man named Judas' home. Stay there and wait. Now, Saul slowly got up. He didn't get very far, though, because guess what? Saul was blind. He became blind. And his men had to help him and lead him to the house of Judas. Once he got to Judas's home, he stayed there for three days and three nights. He didn't eat or drink a thing. Ooh. And God spoke to him. I believe God was ministering to his heart. God gave him a vision. Saul saw a man named Ananias, like in a picture in his mind, coming to help him. At the same time, at another part of the city, 
the man Ananias lived and God spoke to Ananias and God said, Ananias, I want you to go to the house of Judas. There is a man named Saul who had a vision of you coming to help him. Well, Ananias, he did have a relationship with God. He was a Christian and he answered God, what? Really? I know who this man is. He kills Christians. He came to arrest us. And then God simmered Ananias down and said, Ananias, go. For Saul, I have chosen Saul to go and spread my name to thousands, to everyone. Do you think Ananias went? Hmm? If you believe in Jesus, do you think you can obey God no matter what? You know, it's hard. When you read the Bible, God tells us how to live a good life. And sometimes what he tells us to do is very opposite. It's not what the world tells us to do. It tells us to love our enemies and to do good to those that hurt us. That's hard. But it also said God is the God of the impossible. And when you have Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit in your heart giving you power and love, unconditional love. And he will help you. God will help you to do the impossible. And that's what he did with Ananias. Ananias had the Holy Spirit and God helped him. Ananias obeyed God and went to the home of Judas. When he got there, Saul, who was blind, heard him. Heard Ananias come over to him, put his hand on his head, you could say. And Ananias spoke, Brother Saul, the Jesus that you met on the way has told me to come here and heal you of your blindness and fill you with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right away, what looked like scales fell from Saul's eyes. Saul could see. Wow. Saul could see. Not only could he see everything again, but he was so happy and filled with love and joy, knowing that God forgave him of his sin. God forgave him of his past. It was awesome. He knew he was a new man. You know, Saul then got baptized and he headed out and he preached the good news of Jesus to everyone. In fact, Saul became the greatest missionary in the early church. He even wrote much of the New Testament of the Bible. Mm, pretty amazing. His life had turned around. His old life let, was gone. He had now a new life, a new start. Boys and girls, do you want a new start? Jesus wants you to give, give you a new life. He loves you very much, and he died on the cross for your sins so that you can have that new life. The Bible says... Those who belong to Christ, the old life has passed away, a new life has begun. Be blessed.